Greetings everyone, and welcome back to another installment in the iWish series. A series in which I investigate rather dubious tech products sold on various sites around the web just to see if they're any good. Most of the time they're not, but I like to buy this stuff, so you don't have to. Like a lot of the previous iWish installments, this item was picked by you folks on one of my last live streams I did about a month ago, and some of you folks did generously donate towards seeing this reviewed on the channel. So massive thank you to these folks displayed on screen. I really do appreciate it. And there's some familiar names on there, which you've seen before in a lot of the previous I Wish episodes. Props to these fine folks for letting me buy this cheapo stuff for your entertainment. I hope I'm going to be able to deliver a very entertaining and funny review with this one, because we're looking at something that hasn't even been announced yet, let alone the previous generation hasn't even been announced yet. But our good old friends at Welcome have blessed us with the S26 Ultra Plus. Forget the S25 Ultra, that'll come out next year. Don't worry about that, because Welcome have crammed two years of future technology into something in 2024. I don't have high hopes for this one. Let's see what this thing has to offer and do all the usual rambling and going in depth with this product. So if that's your thing, feel free to stick around for the entire review and watch this thing unfold. But if you wanna jump along past the listing, cause I'm definitely looking at the listing, then feel free to use the timestamps in the description as well as the pin comment so you can, yeah bypass all that. Because I know that's not for everyone, but it's a welcome phone on AliExpress. We have to have a look at it. I mean, the name alone says it all. This is the 5G S26 Ultra Plus smartphone, 16 gig plus one terabyte, 7.3 inch screen, 8,800 milliamp hour Android 13 cellulare, dual SIM face unlocked, 48 megapixel plus 72 megapixel 4G cell phone. And currently it's $125 Australian with $3 shipping fee. And this is for the green color with one terabyte of storage and 16 gigs of RAM supposedly, which that's definitely not the case, but I'll display a currency conversion chart on screen to give you an idea of how much this costs around the world. And at that price, you are definitely not going to get those specs. Once again, I just want to remind everyone that I don't endorse the sales of this sort of stuff. I'm buying this stuff. So a lot of you folks out there don't have to buy this thing. I'm looking at this to debunk what they're saying on AliExpress with the false advertising and all that sort of stuff to keep you away from purchasing these things. Because while these phones are cheap, they're not reliable and potentially has some dodgy stuff lingering in the system files. Be careful and stick with a reputable company, not some generic thing off AliExpress. Now we do have a spec list on AliExpress, which says it's the S26 Ultra Plus with a Qualcomm 8 Gen 2 processor in it, 7.3 inch HD full screen with a resolution of 2280 by 3088 though, 2G bands, 3G bands, but no 4G and 5G. Do you think MT658 is living in this? We'll have to see. 16 gig RAM, one terabyte storage, 48 megapixel, 72 megapixel, all of the multi-function full screen face recognition dual card stuff there. They reckon Android 13's on this, but I don't think that's the case. And the 8800 milliamp hour battery. I don't even think this will be 2000 milliamp hours, but we'll see. The reviews on this listing in particular have some very questionable reviews. The photos look a little bit suspicious. They might be from the seller trying to promote this thing. Now, why did we want to purchase the S26 Ultra Plus? Because this is what the S25 Ultra Plus looks like on AliExpress. And we all thought that that wasn't the best looking. So we decided to go for the next generation, skip S25 Ultra, we don't need that. And we went for the S26 Ultra Plus, which when I first seen this, I thought this was an actual folding phone from Welcome, like an actual folding screen. That's not gonna happen for $130 Australian, but instead we have this fake folding phone look. It looks like it folds, but it doesn't. It's just the design on it. And why did we pick green? Because it was the ugliest color out of them all, so why not? Reasons for recommendation. 7.3 inch Infinity O screen with an iguana. Rawr. 16 gig RAM, one terabyte ROM, 10 core processor. Qualcomm 8 Gen 2 is not 10 cores, but okay. 72 megapixel rear camera, 48 megapixel front camera, and the 8800 milliamp hour battery. That says something underneath the battery that I can't quite tell what it says. The data is sourced from Infinix laboratory and tested at 25 degrees Celsius. Oh, we'll get to the battery. There's an advertisement for the battery. But introduce I have to go through all of the listing because it's a welcome device. We have to have a look at it. But if you're not liking the listing so far, please feel free to skip ahead to the unboxing. There's a 7.3 inch Infinity O screen with the iguana there and it looks pretty good. Uh, like a drop of water on the screen. Each bright screen is a new experience with a 7.3 inch Infinity O screen. Ratio is as high as 91% allowing you to experience a wider field a vision in games and videos, the content is displayed more and the phone is still small and light. The phone is still small and light, 7.3 inches. Good job, guys, good job. Fast processor, Qualcomm 8 Gen 2, reshaping Android resource scheduling mechanism, greatly reducing the probability of stagnation, crash, and so on, so that you can snatch red packets faster. There it is. You all wanted to see the snatching red packets faster. Here it is. It's made a return. 
Good to see you again. The key experience between game engines playing large-scale games has greatly improved the network speed, frame rate, and picture smoothness. As I said, anyone want to guess? MT6580? Probably. Most of you already know welcome listings now, so I'll just quickly show this on screen. 16 gig plus one terabyte flash memory. I don't have to read it because I've read it probably 37 times before, but we will have to stop for the fingerprint quick unlock. You can quickly unlock the screen by gently placing your finger on the screen. When you need to pay for the wallet, you can use your finger, print to pay, eliminating the inconvenience of entering a password. We'll have to try out the fake fingerprint, see how fast that is. They still haven't fixed this after so many years. They still have the phone also packed 48 megapixel cell snapper 4, allowing you preserve your own smile of precious memory and outstanding clarity. Come on, welcome. Do a little bit better at least. They can't even bother to fix that. At least they put fancier photos though. No Rubik's Cube technology on the 72 million HD rear cameras. Sorry. The beauty of backlighting? Accurately capture color details under backlight. Between light and dark, free from light, the beauty of the backlight. What did I just read? Oh, yes. Global 5G LTE bands. Yes, the chip has low power consumption more than surpassing. Powerful computing power and surging performance from the beginning. It is one step faster. 5G connection, faster download speed, lower latency, and fast experience. 10 core 5G, 4G LTE bands. Mm-hmm. Agree with it. 8800 milliamp hour long standby. As a family of smartphones, watching videos, chatting on WeChat, listening to music, these are all must. There are a few things. Full of electricity. Play the phone all day long. Mobile phones are like people. Ability, don't forget to charge at night. Once again, what did I just read? The data is sourced from the Infinix laboratory. So that's where they pinched that from. Android 13 AI powery. Okay. Android 13 harnesses the power of AI, give you more from your phone. The edition contains the best of Android built with new Android Magained apps, provides a smarter, more efficient and convenient user experience, and it has TikTok on it, supposedly. Please don't have TikTok on there. That's all of the listing that I just wanted to quickly brief over. Most of it we've all seen before, but it was good revisiting some of the classic welcome terminology. I've said welcome a lot in this one, and I probably still have a lot more to say about welcome. So with that, let's unbox this thing and take a look at it. Taking three weeks from China to Australia, I have a garbage bag. Shout out to my sneaker days when I used to say that a lot. I haven't said that in a while, actually. It's a fairly big box, but I reckon it's just going to be the standard generic white box inside of this, but... Prove me wrong. Phone, prove me wrong. Hey, it's different. There we go. Well, I thought the box was going to be a little bit bigger. But it's not. It's just a little tiny fella. There he is. <laughs> That's very plain. Uh, well, at least they're changing the white box. You know, the white box is, is boring. So let's have nothing except for quad camera. Even if it was quad camera, you've got one on the front and two on the back. Around the box, uh, it's actually very dirty, <laughs> but yep, okay. Color is green. We have European plug there for the S26 Ultra Plus 7.3 inch 16 plus one terabyte, which is the highest configuration. And on the back, looking like a Samsung box with not a whole lot of information on there. Very plain and boring. Let's take a look at this thing. Why does it say A9 Plus on it? <laughs> okay, uh, got a bit of weight to it. Kind of, sort of. In the box, we do get a tiny little charger that weighs nothing. Five volt at one amps. Yeah, I wouldn't trust that. Type A to Type C cable. Headphones with 3.5 mil headphone jack on there. Well, of course, it's the S26 Ultra Plus. We've now got the E Pen. Not the S Pen, it's the E Pen. Because remember, the E Pen, big, big E Pen. Then we have a case. Then I have a screen protector. And static bag that's fine mobile manual tiny little piece of paper that doesn't have too much on there and a little sim eject tool but the phone itself let's take a look at this thing put the e-pen there and wow look at that well that's a big hefty phone but why is it the a9 plus for i wanted the s26 ultra plus where's the s26 ultra plus that's not fair why does it say 12 plus one up there with a crown i'm confused uh let, let's peel that off do we have some bezels going on Oh, yeah, we do. We do. You'll see them soon. We've got our little earpiece up there. I don't see any sensors up there as of yet, but there may be something. The front camera, which, what did that say? 48 megapixels or whatever it was? I would probably say two megapixels. Could be five if we're lucky. Going around the phone, the blue is very pitted. Actually, no, it's not pitted. It's just the look of it is like that, which is a bit strange. We've got a volume rocker and the power button just there, protected by a little piece of foam. And then at the bottom, we've got speaker grill, type C, headphone jack, and a hole for a microphone. And on the other side, we do have the SIM tray. They said it's green, but it's, yeah, it's more sort of blue. And then on the back, 
<laughs> Warnig. <laughs> yes, Warnig. What does that have on there? Fingerprint, camera, face recognition, WhatsApp, Facebook, Wi-Fi, YouTube, Android. With a little crown. What does the little crown mean? <laughs> Camera bump, HD camera, ultimate experience. Yes. Do not use this non standard card, hand cut card, or the wrong type of card, otherwise it may cause damage to the deck. What the fuck is this even talking about? What are you, what are you even talking about, phone? The phone battery is not removable. Please contact professional person if you need to replace the battery. Am I professional? Yes. Yes, I am. Um, well, I guess we'll peel that off then. And there it is. Looking at it there, you can see that it's trying to be a foldable with that little design there. If that wasn't there, then you wouldn't think of it as one. Oh, I think we could do a bend test on this possibly. <laughs> the frame is all plastic. And taking a look at the top of the phone at the wonderful rear camera there, the what hold 72 megapixels. That's probably eight megapixels. We've got a tiny little LED flash just there. Some decorative sensors, the second camera that's decorative and the <laughs> HD camera ultimate experience. There's no secondary screen. That's just fake. It looks okay. It's kind of thin, kind of, and it's got a big screen on it. How well will it perform though? So it's a combination of the Z Flip 5 and the Z Flip 4, kind of. That's both of them side by side. You kind of get what they're trying to aim for here. Taking the SIM tray out, we've got support for a micro SD card and two nano SIMs. I won't test dual SIM functionality because I have a feeling this will even struggle to be 4G, but with my micro SD card and my Telstra SIM, I'll put that in the phone if it fits. There we go. We'll slap the case on it. Why not? Give the screen a bit of a clean, which there's no screen protector on the screen. You have to apply that yourself. And we are ready to power on the S26 Ultra Plus from our friends over at Welcome. If the case is on properly. Here we go. Nothing changes. It's just another Welcome device. Does it sound like a Welcome device though? <sighs> also, the, the speaker was still going there with the boot sound. Um, I'll try and dump the system files from this so you can have a look at all the wonderful stuff. Here we go, we've booted up. Yes. That camera, that's got a big circle around it, but the bezels on this, we're, we've got a chin and we've got some pretty thick bezels around the screen. I just want to see how big the screen actually is. It claims to be 7.3 inches. If it's corner to corner of the LCD, it's about 6.6 .6 inches across. If I was to go from the top of the phone to the bottom of the phone, it's only seven inches. Straight away, you don't get your 7.3 inches of real estate. Look, it's close enough. I will say the display quality on this is washed. Oh, it just died on me. On camera, it probably looks better than it does in person. It's really low res. Like, it looks so blurry. The icons are just so blurry. We've got the Samsung One UI icons there as well. Of course, they had to put them on here to make it more official looking, you know? We've got 5G, supposedly. And Facebook, Google Play, sign in, sign in, go away. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, flashlight. <laughs> Let's try the tiny little LED. <laughs> It's pathetic. Look at that. Oh my God, you wouldn't even be able to see a centimeter in front of you. Oh boy. Well, well, well done. It's tiny. It's itty bitty. They had all of that space to work with, but they've went, beep. Location, mobile data, airplay mode, and hotspot. Not a whole lot there. Can I add some stuff? What is with the speaker? Listen to this. That's not the vibration motor. That's actually the sounds from the phone being low quality and playing more than what they should. This is all making sense and oh God, it's laggy. Oh boy, 16 gigs. Yeah. All right, well, um, we'll touch and hold on the main screen first because we've got wallpapers, wallpapers, just once. I only want to look at wallpapers, phone. It's okay. Uh, probably borrowed off Samsung. Probably borrowed off Samsung, probably borrowed off Samsung. Even though I do daily drive an S23 Ultra, I wouldn't know the default wallpapers from a Samsung. My God, it's just chugging along. I don't have high hopes for you, S26 Ultra Plus. Fantastic quality so far. All of the usual applications to test on here with, as I said before, the One UI icons. I'll just jump straight into settings. This looks different. Change your pace. Uh, we've got something slightly different going on here. Network and internet. Anyone want to guess the Android version? 
It's looking like Android 6 to me, could prove me wrong, 2.4 gigahertz. All right, not having high hopes. The keyboard there looks slightly different. I'm connected to my Wi-Fi network. Go into mobile network, preferred network type, 5G. Yes, yes indeed. Let's see what it comes up as if we check for networks. Should show me Telstra and 3G, should. And it's confirmed. We have 3G on this device. I'm really thinking MT6580. I'm not even going to try to call this, to be fairly honest. If I know that it's only got 3G, there's no point even testing it. It's probably going to be just a very bare bones earpiece that's in there. So nothing too spectacular. But let's try the E-Pen. How do we put the E-Pen with the phone, like how it's supposed to be? I guess you just do a little something like this. Genuine Samsung. Connected devices doesn't have anything to note in there. Apps and notifications though. Oh, let's see what's in here. Show me, <sighs> show me anything actually. Come on, buddy. You can do it. Little hamster in there. He's running fast. All right, here we go through system artificial switch. Straight away, we can do some stuff in Quick Shortcut Maker. Can't wait for that. MediaTek. I'm thinking MT6580, folks. I don't think we got anything past that. Finger lock. <laughs> okay. Uh, yep, cool. Google Play Services is on here. Location, messaging, moto. Yes. Yes. Yes, indeed. Yep, keep going. Shell SIM recovery test tool. It's looking like it's got Oreo on here, though. But we'll have to keep checking. And I've got a little Chinese app down there, which I'm not too sure what that is, but okie dokie. Battery, one hour and 40 minutes left. Didn't you claim to be 8,800 milliamp hours, my friend? Ah, uh, yes. 2,000 milliamp hours, probably. The last full charge was 217 days ago. Well, in that case, let's watch it die very, very, very fast. Just... One hour and 40 minutes left. And this is as bright as the display gets as well, by the way. Um, it is an IPS LCD, which is good, but um, that's probably all I can praise this display for. Sounds, we have the usual fluty phone that's in there. Sound enhancement, best loudness that's on. Storage, 0% used but then 3.45 gig used. All right, sure. Time for security and location. So let's do fingerprint first. Unlock with fingerprint. Just touch the fingerprint sensor to unlock your phone, authorize purchases or sign into apps. All right, cool. Set up screen lock. Fingerprint and pin. One, two, three, four, safe pin. Never use this for your daily driver. And let's find the fingerprint sensor on this. Yep, so magic, it's down the bottom. There it is. So let's, uh, uh what can we use? Hang on, let me, let me just, let me do this. All right. Okay. So I just added my nose to it, all right? Cool. So now, if we just do this, and I go down here, I just unlocked it with my nose. Would you like to see that again? I'll do it for you all. Nose unlock. I don't need to explain to everyone how fake that is, but um, you can just... It's also extremely hot down there too. Holy moly. I really need a temperature sensor so I could tell you all how hot things are. Can I do face unlock? There was face unlock in applications, but I'll just see if it's here. Yeah, face unlock. Good stuff. Same one that was on the Povo. Show my face. Any day now. Cool. Face captured. Yep, that's the one. Oh god, this thing is so slow. Really? <laughs> it's probably gonna crash. Oh, I mentioned that hamster. He, he, he's, he's left home now. He's gone home for the day. I thought maybe we would have had something faster. Come on, buddy. You could do it. Oh, it, it can't do it. It can't do it. Let's ignore face unlock then. Can I even get back into settings now? I might have broken it. I don't know how. Uh, maybe maybe because I've stuck the S Pen on the back there. Let's reboot it and hopefully that fixed it. Did I select reboot or shut down? Are you okay? Oh, okay, it's alive. Gave me a bit of a scare there. Hear the brute sound and the speaker after it.
Did you hear it? It just kept going. Back to this. All right. Speedy. There you go. Oh, we fixed it. Just needed a reboot. All right, let's not touch security and location ever again then. Users and accounts. I'll just add my burner Gmail onto this. Who knows how long this is going to take, but I'm prepared. I'm going to just say it now, but this Samsung dumb phone that I picked up the other day is a lot faster than this thing. And it's genuine Samsung too. Should we use the e-pen? Hang on, so that's why you take it out of its little home. There you go. And then we go, all right. Keyboard. Oop, you okay there? All right. Feels just like the real deal. Only crunchier. Oh, I should have used the e-pen to um, set up fingerprint, but nah, nose unlock's fine. I don't think I've ever done nose unlock before. Still logging in. There you go. I feel like this phone's just gonna spontaneously combust on me. Now that I've added my Gmail, that only took like 10 minutes. Let's keep going through settings. Accessibility, not much here. Moving on. Google, system, let's go into system. Languages and input, Gboard, gestures, this is gonna be jump to camera, that's it. Update <laughs> Android 13. Oh, okay, so it's the BP FP3 A3 Lix 80 QS 27186 NV01. Check for updates. Of course, we're up to date. About phone, S26 Plus Ultra. I can edit it, what can we call it? I have pressed the edit button. I'm just waiting for it to do something. Oh, it's not gonna do anything. Oh, it's th th that edit button's just there for the fun of it. Both IMEIs are listed there. Feel free to look them up and see what they correspond with. Checking my Gmail, it just says that it's an Android phone. It doesn't say a model or anything. Android version 13, supposedly. Not Android 13. Security patch level 2022. And do I see anything that could indicate anything about this? Not really. We have a unique serial number though. Wow, that's impressive. If I go into SIM status, I can see that I'm only connected to 3G. Well, that's everything that's in settings that I had to look at. And already, I'm hating this phone. The Povi 5 Pro that I recently had a look at, that actually was fairly reasonable. But with this though, I just want to throw the thing out the window. It's so incredibly slow, but I guess for the price paid, it was to be expected. So let's go through the applications and see what we have to test. So let's just say you have bought this. Please don't buy this phone, please. Save yourself the torture. Don't ever buy this thing. Let's just say you have, and you want to open up the browser on this and browse the web, then allow browser to do everything that it shouldn't need to do. But okie dokie. And now we can type in Samsung S26 Ultra. There we go. Let's see what online says. Some person has made the S26 Ultra trailer an introduction. 320 megapixel camera. S25 Ultra, S26 Ultra. <laughs> How ludicrous it looks. Why is the screens on the back there like that? Wait, that was SoundCloud? Okay, someone's made a song for the S26 Ultra already. All right, cool. Browsing on this, let's open Tom's Guide. It's a, it's about as slow as you'd expect, to be fairly honest. You can browse the web. Just gotta wait for it a little bit to load a picture. It's loading a picture. Just a single JPEG. Just one. No, it was text, it was loading, not an image. No, it was an image. There you go, it was an image and text for an advertisement. Calculator. Ah, it's not rad. It's slow. Calendar, camera, just help me. Camera, ah, uh, uh, okay. Oh my God, there's a lot of options here. The autofocus is fake. We have lots of options like food, which doesn't do anything. Night mode, which looks the same. Panorama, which looks the same. Pro, that <laughs> doesn't offer anything different. Life focus, photo, video, super slow-mo. Oh, does that actually work though? Super slow motion, uh-huh. Yes, indeed, slow motion and hyperlapse. Okay, even the sounds for this. You can hear it just, uh, let's go to settings. This is horrific. EIS, great. 
picture quality, 480p. You folks were really intrigued in seeing this. I hope you're enjoying this so far. 480p on the back camera. And what's the front camera? 320 by 240 probably. Oh, that's 480p too, but I can do CIF, which is like 176 by 144. I can do filters. I can change the aspect ratio. There's positives. I need to put this phone down, gain my composure, and come back to this thing. And I'd like to get through this review as quickly as possible. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take a break and then take some photos and videos with this. I'll come back and we can quickly continue testing what do we have left on this thing, to be honest. What YouTube test, uh, FM radio speaker test, gaming benchmarks, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, let's get through this as quickly as possible. This thing is, is painful to use. I'd much prefer the Povo. The e pens on the back too. I'm leaving it there for authentic Samsung vibes. We'll be back soon. Shh, friend. Shh. We'll be back soon. Well, here we are at the rear camera quality of the Welcome S26 Ultra Plus thing, and this is what video looks like. 480p, looking good. Can I do any focusing? Well, if I touch the screen, it just does that, which means not a whole lot. <laughs> it makes it look a little bit clearer. It's a very bare bones camera, a whole bunch of options, but none of it does anything. Except panorama on the front camera and back camera, that works. But apart from that though, uh, it's very lackluster. It's the monster. 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 Very big monster. You found a ball. Lazy bones. Yeah. Beside. Boo. Ah. Stop wrecking the house. Is it smooth? Kind of. Not really. Yes, it is. It's 480p. They can't stuff up 480p, can they? They can. They probably have. But... <laughs> oh, what do you expect for something like this? The Povo was so much better than this thing. This is just painful. And the amount of crashes I've had during the camera is just ridiculous. I think the back's already starting to fall off as well, which is good. Um, there we go. Does that focus? Can you see Breeze there? I can't see Breeze there. Looks like pixels. Cool. Alright. Uh, Want to see night time? Looks even better. Well, the LED on the S26 Ultra Plus thing is this bright. Wow, it looks like my hand's like a zombie hand. Holy shit. Um, but like, <laughs> that's how close you have to get. So like, let's go down to the froggos. We're almost there. There we go. Yeah, the LED is slightly useless. Slightly. No, it's, it's completely useless. Um, yeah, I'm pointing at the frog right now. Uh, there we go. So what? That's about 15 centimeters away from the frog right now. 
good good stuff. Testing the front camera quality of the Welcome S26 Ultra Plus. Going for a bit of a... Uh, you know what? There's not a lot of jelly movement going on. It's actually not too bad. It's a 480p though. Whee! And we have zoom as well. Um, no autofocus or anything. And yeah, doing a panorama on the front camera. That's that's a first. Never been able to do that before, but I have, and um, it looked as good as you'd expect. The camera has crashed so many times while I've been trying to do this camera test. It's uh, it's unreliable, but um. That's the front camera quality of this thing. I'm back. I had a good couple of days not having to use this thing, which was really, really good. But the minute I went back to using this thing, I instantly regretted it. It is now slower than ever because I've put all my applications on here. And just as a comparison, just... Do, do you see what I mean? And like to get to the apps as well. It's starting to struggle. Let's discuss camera quality. So we have a five megapixel rear camera and a two megapixel front camera. Both are equally as bad as one another. And video wise, 480p on the front, 480p on the back. At least it was a consistent 30 FPS on the back camera. Also the EXIF data for the photos shows that it's an S24 Ultra. So likely they've just renamed it and went, yeah, it's good enough. X26 Ultra sounds so much more futuristic. We'll just go with that. Thus we have this. No focusing or anything like that. It is just bare bones cameras that they've put on this thing. When I was doing the camera test I managed to glitch the camera when switching to 16x9 from 4x3 it resulted in the images just being and all the other options as well just don't work apart from panorama which did work and panorama on the front camera which was an experience first time I've ever encountered that on a welcome device so you're all very welcome but um it's that was unintentional, sorry. The super slow motion doesn't work, none of that works. It's just a fancy looking camera app that doesn't do a whole lot. But by saying that it doesn't do a lot, it actually does do something quite consistently as well, is that it just crashes. When I was doing the video and I'd record sort of a minute of footage and then go to stop it, this would just crash. I'd have to go back into it and then taking photos, sometimes it would just crash on the photos as well. Uh, very unreliable so far. Now for the camera quality, I've talked about it all, you know it's garbage, so let's move on, because I really want to just check the specs of this thing to be fairly honest. I did dump the system files, but I couldn't dump all of them, because it is actually Android 8.1, according to the errors that I did get anyways. So it's a combination of really low specs and Android 8.1, resulting in a very, very unpleasant experience, to put it lightly. The applications I've installed are the usual, device info hardware, Doom, San Andreas, Quick Shortcut Maker and CPU System Info. So let's just get the basic things done. So File Manager looks File Manager. Flashlight looks like a flashlight. Oh my God, the LED outside. Oh boy, forgot to mention that in the camera test. It is so pathetic. When I tear this down, I want to have a look at the tiny little LED that's in there. FM radio, we can test because I need headphones. So what's on Australian radio on a Monday night at 7.51 p.m.? Probably not a whole lot. No. Uh... Should we just move on? Yeah, let's not even worry about that. The speaker quality I'm definitely interested in. So in saying that, I think we should go straight to music then. We go for BFG Division with Best Loudness On. It sounds reasonable at this point in time. bad, to be honest. That's not too bad, to be fairly honest. I was expecting a lot worse. It wasn't too loud. The volume that it's at is quite fair, and I will give the speaker credit. It's not too bad. I'll try my terrible song that I made. People want to hear the full MP3 of this. I don't want to release it. Okay, one thing I, I can definitely hear, in between the breaks, the speaker is still going shh, as I've already demonstrated earlier in the review. Every time the phone makes sounds, the sounds just continue on after they've stopped, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? That doesn't make sense at all. Moving on, we don't have much left. Phone, Play Store, Quick Shortcut Maker, Settings, Sim Toolkit, Sound Recorder, what does that look like? Usual one. Can you see how much laggier it is now though? 
Also, why in recents is the icon there for clearing everything? Shouldn't it be like up there or there? Just in the middle? But all right, sure. Finally, uh, YouTube. I don't even think Costa Rica will play in 720p. I know I sound like I might be complaining during this review, but ah, it's probably one of the more painful welcome devices I've tested in a while. There we go, got it now. It's just so horrifically slow. It's still, there you go. It finally loaded YouTube. As I said, the Povo 5 Pro that I recently had a look at, that actually had decent specs and was cheaper than this, but this is just one of those welcome devices that's just bottom of the barrel. And the faster I get through this review, the better, but I have to run Geekbench on this, which, which will be great. 720p, 60 FPS, go on. Yes, I'm doing full screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh god, the speaker! Oh, you can really hear it now. But can it do 60 FPS? <laughs> no, it cannot. Wow. What if I zoom it in? That usually does stuff. Oh, the hole punch is so off as well with the user interface. It's just strange but uh the quality of the display i mean if we just sort of have a look at that it's still pretty washed out the detail's not quite there i'd say it's probably a 480p screen maybe let's be fair to this it's also getting hot right about here as well that's the display working <laughs> the secondary display i wish they actually did something with that let's go 480p then let's be fair to this come on 16 gigs of ram and your Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, 480p. You can do it, buddy. I believe in you. I don't believe in you. Yeah, I definitely don't believe in it. This is 480p. Oh, let me let me go back this way. There you go. 480p. And it's struggling. Have I ever had a welcome device in the last sort of year or year and a half that actually struggled with 480p? I probably have, I just don't remember though. At this point in time, I'm now convinced that there's no hamster running in this. It's probably just a tumbleweed just flying around inside of this thing trying to power it. So let's open Geekbench and see what it comes up with. See the hole punch with the user interface? It's fine. Well, there it is, folks. We have the MT6580WP, wow processor, uh, and it's the S24 Ultra Plus, Android 8.1.0. It's uh, 801 right now. Go on, speedy MT6580. The minute I seen 3G, I thought, has to be MT6580, and sure enough, it is. Also, I can say the battery does drain really quickly in this. During the camera test, I think it dropped about 40% or so in about half an hour, and charging it back up is just super slow, so it'd be probably 5 volt 1 amps that's in this. Waking up when it's gone. Ah, boy. Is it done? Nope. <laughs> Ugh. Holy crap, it's done. Oh, wow. 70 and 193. I'll display some other specs to the side of this. Looking at previous scores, the Liegu M9 had 51 for single and multi was 150. And the x Mate 10 that had 65 single and the multi was 125. Um, it only took close to half an hour, but at least I know that it's MT6580. I think we'll do quick gaming then. Play some Doom first. I just want to see if um, Doom struggles on this or not. Let's see. Well, it's stretched. Does Doom lag? I was gonna say, Doom surely can't lag. Also, it's really weird. Wait, Doom is lagging. It, nah, it can't be. I need to pair up a keyboard, I don't believe it. Okay, ah, shush. I've paired my Bluetooth keyboard to this. 
I'm gonna go back into Doom and see if it's laggy. So let's do it again and play Doom how it's meant to be played with a keyboard. I'd hate to say it, but Doom actually has some frame dips. It's smooth for the most part, but when something like this is kind of struggling with Doom a little bit... Look, the door animations, you can kind of see it there, and going along there and stuff. Look, look at that, look at this. There is actual lag in Doom on this. I'm thoroughly impressed. I think Doom ran better on that pen I looked at a couple of months ago, or whenever it was. The phone's just still making noise. You alright, buddy? Let's try San Andreas. I'll bump it all up to maximum. Come on, I want to see this really struggle. Okay, okay. It's reasonable. It's not reasonable. Uh, alright. Ouch. 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 Oh yeah, Mali 400 MP. Doing doing its job. At least it looks nice though. Th there's positives in this. But let's be fair to it. Let's put everything just back to default. There we go. That's on the default settings. It's fine now. I'll never make that. Never ever make that. Look, I think I've seen more than what I've needed to see on this. I think we should check the specs and see what we're dealing with. I think I have a rough idea of what's going on though, but I'll just clear the background processes just so then this thing doesn't lag any more than it's already lagging. All right, device info hardware, here we go. What have you got inside of you? All right, well, device info hardware says that, which is all wrong. System on chip, Qualcomm Gen 2, MediaTek. Yes, Mali 400 MP. Uh, it's the S26 Ultra Plus. Screen is 1640 by 720. Could it actually be a 720p display on this? Come on, buddy. <laughs> Okay, 10 point multi touch. 16 gig, 1 terabyte. Yeah, sure. 48 megapixel, 72 megapixel. Uh huh. All fake here. Let's try the other one. Show me the real specs. There we go. So it's an S24 Ultra Plus. That's for certain. MT6580, Android 8.1.0. That's all correct there. The speedy quad core. 16 gigs of internal storage and 2 gigs of RAM in this. The that doesn't make any sense. The 2 gigs of RAM in this can't be. 720p display though on this. The Povo 5 Pro display was way better than this and cost less too. So 720p on a 6.7 inch display. It's not bad, I guess. Uh, there's the capacity of the battery, 3,614,457 milliamp hours, good stuff. Thermal, 25 and 25. And sensors, just accelerometer, cameras, it just crashes. Cool. Let's go to Quick Shortcut Maker and see what we can do in this. So straight away, I'm gonna go to artificial switch. Okay, well, well, that was easy. We have 16 gigs of storage, two gigs of RAM, 3G, two megapixels, two megapixels for the back camera, but the shots were five megapixels. Okay, so 720 by 1640 is probably the actual resolution there. Actually, I can tell you all. So I've just taken a screenshot, put it on my computer. It is 720 by 1640. There's a 720p display on this. It's not bad. Oh, look, I can put a 20,000 milliamp hour battery in this. Cool, that oh, was an easy upgrade. You can also upgrade the screen size as well because sure. But notice how the model doesn't say S26 Ultra there. It's just S24, S23 Pro Plus, S23 Ultra, S24 Ultra, and S25 Ultra. Let's put it all to the maximum just for the fun of it. And you can be the S25 Ultra. Ultra need reboot. Okay. Oh, welcome. S26 Ultra Plus Pro Max. Oh, I corrected it. Special edition. Okay. Oh, not more than 40 characters. Okay, that's it. I've changed the specs. Yep, <laughs> did you just see it? It just jumped from one terabyte to two terabytes just there. And sure enough, that is the Welcome S26 Ultra Plus Pro Max there running Android 13. And then going back to device info hardware and then going to system, see it's all changed. Memory, 32 gig, 108 megapixels. See how easy it is for them to change the specs? Just like that. All right, let's see if there's anything else in Quick Shortcut Maker that I can stuff around with. I think there was a boot um, animation select, but I'll have to check that. The factory test, which is just sh the MediaTek one. Nope, okay, it's broken. Fac mod by Shivan. Oh, wait a second, hang on, hold up. Does this actually have this? No, 
that looks exactly like the Samsung test menu, but they haven't implemented it in the dialer. A Mobile Zen factory test. There's a lot of factory tests on here. Oh, yep, there you go. Do you want to interrupt the test? Fail. Yes. Um, it's Ultraman there too, by the way. Let me see. Oh, this Moto thing. Well, it's a fingerprint there. So what the hell is this? Moto actions. What am I doing? Oh, it's just security? Yeah, it's just some shortcuts. That's all it is. Someone might be able to explain that to me because it's not making any sense to me there. No, I don't think I'm able to change the boot animation. I think we're stuck with just welcome on this. That's everything that I need to test on this. The display is acceptable. The speaker is acceptable. The build quality is acceptable. Then pretty much everything else is downhill from there. If I was to go by what it says in CPU system info and the artificial switch app, MediaTek MT6580 paired with two gigs of RAM an Android 8.1, resulting in this clusterfuck of an experience. Well, I can absolutely admit that this phone was painful to use, and if anyone does happen to buy this, um, good luck trying to use it for more than five minutes, because you'll just find that things just crash and not open as quick as you'd think, and, um, yeah, can we keep, can I tear it down now? Yeah, cool. Off we go. At least the back looks nice, and, and the frame is blue, not green. Would you class that as blue, not green? I've tested so many welcome devices on the channel, I just don't remember the performance of them, but phones that come to mind that were that painful were the Susan M5, the X27, and Xerls thing, and probably the PP or the Peacock phone, to be fairly honest. But now I can pull this thing apart and see the innards of this. That was easy. Oh. Oh. Cracked the back glass. Oh no. See? Just proving that it's... Ah ha just proven that it's actual glass on there. And look, they actually kind of used a proper um, adhesive. Not that it worked though. There's the battery there though. Doesn't tell me a whole lot. Also the display, yeah, cool. Is there a screw missing? They forgot to put a screw in there, didn't they? They were haphazardly throwing this together as fast as they could. Nothing's coming up for this battery. Looking at that though, I'd say maybe 3000 milliamp hours, just as a guess. I've got a bunch of screws we need to remove. So uh, speedy screw montage, I guess. With all 67 screws removed, I should be able to just pop the frame away from the body. Yep. There we go. Didn't have to use tools. Um, there's our plastic frame just there. Not a whole lot going on with that, apart from the rear camera being decorative. The motherboard does look familiar. I think I've seen this one before. But what does it say on the sticker there? 2 plus 16 3G, right there. So it actually is two gigs of RAM in this. And then they paired that with an MT6580, which is, uh, which is, which is good. Let's have a look at the LED flash. It's right there. That right there is probably the smallest LED flash I have ever seen before. It's impressive how disappointing it is. Does that make sense? Hopefully I haven't killed the display ribbon because it was stuck directly to the battery. Should be okay. There we go. Uh, yeah, it looks, uh, it looks fine. I think. Metal frame in there, sort of the rib cage design that I've called it. Um, I do see 720 by 16 just there on the display, so it's definitely 1640 by 720. All right, pop that off, pop this off, pop you out of there, and that should be everything. There it is. So we don't have any cooling except for the LCD. Frame is just the usual one with multiple cutouts, so they just cut the frame out to fit whatever motherboard they've got laying around, but that's all looking fairly average at this point in time. Taking a better look at the board though, there's our front camera just there, which is a tiny itty bitty little fella. The rear camera looks a little something like that with no movement to it. Little earpiece, vibration motor. It's that LED though, I can't believe that. That's the cheapest LED I've ever seen. There's two unused connectors. I would say the MediaTek would be under there. So I didn't need to pull the, um, the board out actually, but I just did anyways. Nothing else on the battery. There's a QR code. Does anyone want to scan that? Feel free to scan that and it might take you somewhere. It might give you a Rickroll or something. I'll just remove this bit of shielding. I won't remove any others. I'll just remove this bit. I broke it. Look right there. I broke it. Ah, uh, where did it even go? Um, it doesn't matter. The shielding is extremely tight though, like, holy moly. There we go. That's totally not gonna work now, but I just wanna confirm MT6580 right there and a Macron module. Yep, that's definitely two gig and 16 gigs there. It's a uh, Micron module right there. 
I just one of those connectors right off there. I don't think it'll work again. I needed to double check. I didn't want to just go by the sticker. I needed to absolutely 100% make sure that this was what it says it is. I will be terribly surprised if it actually still functions. Now, right, before I put it back together completely, I reckon it's dead. Here we go. How did you survive that? Do you boot? That's the question. If it boots, I'll uh, display the full specifications to the side. You can get a good idea of what's inside of this thing. It still works. Amazing. I thought it was doomed. Uh, it's not. Is this the first MT6580 with two gigs of RAM or not? Once again, I don't quite remember what welcome devices I've reviewed in the past. Feel free to let me know. It's fine. It survived. How did it survive? Also, people are probably wondering about the whole fingerprint thing. If there was an actual optical fingerprint sensor, the screen would light up as well, but you'd also see something there, but nothing's there. And it's definitely not ultrasonic. They don't have the money for that. That's, that's a little too advanced for our friends over at Welcome. Did I do it? Yep. Slick. Well, it looks like it is almost back together. I'll just... Factory. As I said, I could do a bend test on it, um, but I'll keep it working, but that's it. I'm glad that I've taken a look at the next next generation of welcome clones. I don't think anyone's going to be silly enough to believe that the S26 Ultra is out on AliExpress for 120 bucks. That's it, folks. That's another installment in the iWish series. Taking a look at the S26 Ultra Plus Pro thing from AliExpress that you folks generously donated to see on the channel. So thank you very much to the folks displayed on screen. And I'll also read your names out as well. Massive thank you to Ruffle Daniel, Helmy87, Everyday Blind or King Cobra, Brian Martins, Cutie Clism, Makoto Itchy Nose. I'm sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly. Scott. <laughs> okay, sure. Oh, uh, well, 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 that scared me. I, I, I don't know how that fell, but it, it fell. Don't fall, buddy. Skylar D, Dingo Vlog, Ryuji CM, Beats Popo, Cheese the Sylveon, Beto Aviation. I hope that was correct. Diego Martins and HVN. Uh, once again, thank you so much for donating on that live stream. I hope I've delivered an in-depth, entertaining look at another cheapo welcome device that was extremely painful to look at. Um, but... I've looked at it. You'll have to let me know what you thought of this one down in the comments below. The Povo I looked at last week was reasonable, but this is probably in like the top 10 worst welcome phones that I've had a look at on the channel. It honestly just was painful, but two gigs of RAM still baffles me with an MT6580, but just agree with it, I guess. I have found something else on AliExpress that I might want to take a look at soon, but I'm not too sure yet. It just came up in my recommended and it looks really cool. It's a Soyuz phone and it looks interesting. So I'll, I'll have a think about it. All right, folks, enough rambling. Thank you so much for watching this latest installment in the Irish series. I really, really do appreciate it. And as always, please take care, stay safe, be good people. And I'll see you all in the next one, which will be looking at something. I've got lots to do and I don't know when I'm doing it, but I'll do it. Until the next one, keep being awesome and I'll see you all very, very soon. I experienced the torture so you don't have to. Ah, uh, this was painful. If it had a slightly better processor and a slightly deep bloated version of Android, probably would have had something. Nah, actually, nah. I don't think this one was redeemable. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments below. All right, thanks again. I'll see you all soon. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video. Um, hang on. <laughs> that was slick. <laughs> that was slick. <laughs> okay.